What's up guys, Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros, and today we're going to be testing out some no GPU gaming in 2022. Does it suck? And it is sponsored by MSI. MSI reached out to us and was like, hey, we don't care what you do with the PC, we just want you to build a very beautiful computer featuring our awesome white MSI products like this case, cooler, power supply, and uh, yeah, that's mainly it. And the storage device that they sent over it looks really nice, so big thanks to MSI for sponsoring this build. And uh, yeah, we're going to be testing the 12600K iGPU because every single Intel generation we like to test the iGPU and see how well it performs. And of course, with a build like this, you could slap in a graphics card and make it look absolutely perfect and get awesome performance. But yeah, we really want to dive into that iGPU. So let's just not waste any more time and go over each individual part and how it makes up this no GPU gaming PC. So ladies and gentlemen, right here we have the i5-12600K. And you may be thinking, 12600K for no GPU build? Yeah, it's overkill, we know that. We just, you know, wanted to try it out because we do have the latest and greatest Intel graphics. It doesn't get any better than this as far as the integrated graphics on Intel goes until we have 13th or 14th gen or whatever they come out with next. But 10 cores and 16 threads is pretty insane. And obviously, add a GPU down the line. This is just to get you started. You know, GPU prices are coming down. You wanna wait to get that new 4000 line or something like that, you know, this will hold you over for now. And speaking of overkill CPU, we have an overkill cooler for it. And really, I mean, honestly, once you get your graphics card in here, this this actually really does make sense for a K processor. If this is a 12400, like a 12100, yeah, this'd be kind of weird. But this is the MagCore Liquid 240RV2 White. And uh, yeah, we really like MSI coolers. We actually use them in quite a few of our custom builds. So definitely a, a good looking cooler and on top of that. They're typically always ARGB. Well, I assume it is. It's just like their mystic lighting. So if it is ARGB like it should be, it'll work perfectly with all those fans in there and I just like that they don't really do the typical discrimination where they have like custom connectors that make it to where you can't add anything you want to the build so this is nice and universal. Now for the motherboard we have this MSI Mag B660 Mortar Wi-Fi DDR4 that's a mouthful and obviously right now B660s only come with DDR4 to my knowledge if you want to go DDR5 you have to go Z690 and no the RAM is not interchangeable once you go with this board you have to go DDR4 and vice versa but one thing I like about all the B660s even the cheap ones you usually get 2.5 gigabit LAN you get the latest Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. You have some insane USB speeds and you got a really good upgrade path with them. I mean, you can go all the way to like an i9 if you really wanted to, but yeah, B660, pretty high-end one as well. And for the RAM, we have 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance dual channels. So that's two 16 gig sticks and it's the Vengeance Pro. It's white. It's going to look amazing in this build and we're super excited to use it. And in terms of that power supply, let's move this beautiful cooler out of the way. We have the Mag A750 GF White. Of course, with this white theme build, we have to go with this white power supply because there is a cutout on the power supply basement in this case that we'll talk about here in a second. 750 watts, 80 plus gold, very high-end power supply that can handle all the way up to like a 3080, 3090 if you really wanted to. Yeah, it's pretty highly rated, so you really can't go wrong with this power supply. Now for the SSD, we have this MSI Spatium M480 M.2 Gen 4 SSD with read and write speeds up to 7,000 megabytes per second. Yeah, it's a Gen 4 SSD. It's gonna be blazing faster video editing, any sort of other content creation, and those faster load times in games. And uh, yeah, two terabytes is more than enough to get you started into PC gaming. And last but certainly not least, the Gunyear 110R. Yeah, sorry about that. I almost forgot what it was called. Um, and as you can see right here, it's the all white design. We have three RGB fans built in. Well, actually four, one in the back already. So with that AIO up top, it's gonna look really good. And uh, yeah, it's a white themed case. Looks like decent airflow and the build quality looks really solid. So very excited to put this no GPU build together, see how it performs and obviously suggest what GPU to throw in in the future because this build definitely deserves one at some point. So let's put this thing together.
All right, guys, now that we have this i5-12600K all booted up and ready to go, let's dive into those benchmarks, shall we? Now, we decided to test this PC in a handful of titles, those being GTA 5, the Halo Master Chief Collection, Team Fortress 2, and Fortnite. Now, with our iGPU testing, we like to test games that make sense for integrated graphics. You're not going to be playing Warzone. You're not going to be playing the latest and greatest, but I'm just curious to see how well 12th Gen has come in terms of their iGP performance and hope in the future that Intel can even improve on this further along with AMD as they release some new CPUs because iGPUs are a very powerful thing that allow average budget gamers to not have to buy graphics cards if they want to do some light gaming. Now, first up in GTA 5, using the built-in benchmark 1080p normal settings, we start to see a 60 FPS average. Yes, there are a few dips here and there, but on average, we get about 60 FPS once the benchmark finishes, and it goes to show that having a very powerful CPU, even if the iGPU isn't great, can carry you in some of these games. More CPU-bound games will really love the 12600K with its very high efficiency and the 12th gen architecture, so it really doesn't matter what kind of iGPU you have as long as it's somewhat adequate. Now, of course, GTA 5 is a game that a lot of people still play, so seeing a 60 FPS average is pretty impressive without a graphics card. Next up in the Halo Master Chief Collection, we used Halo Reach in a firefight mode for this. We used performance settings at 1080p and we got 60 plus FPS. I will have to say, when we were testing a Ryzen 7 5800H with Vega 8 graphics, we were not able to get these performance numbers because I do believe the Master Chief Collection is much more CPU bound than it is GPU bound, therefore that 12600K can perform much better with its iGPU. I tested Halo Reach because most of the other games in the collection will run exactly the same. Halo 4 may be a little bit more demanding, but just to show that you can run the Master Chief Collection at 60 plus FPS and some other older games, esports titles at 60 plus FPS with the iGPU, it really does show that it can do it. Now, a game I love to throw into our benchmarks now because there's kind of a movement around it, hashtag save TF2, is Team Fortress 2 on high settings at 1080p. We got about 90 plus FPS with some stutters here and there in more insane environments. There's a lot more to PC gaming than the latest and greatest. There's a lot of older games like TF2, CSGO, and a bunch of other titles out there that have existed for a while that you can still play without a graphics card, and getting 90 plus FPS in this game is still very impressive, and it's still a very fun game to play, and it's free to play. And the last game, of course, we had the test was Fortnite 1080p performance mode, and this is right when the new update released, so do take these numbers with a grain of salt. Whenever there's a new release in Fortnite, the performance numbers tend to be a little bit wonky on the first update, and we got about 50 to 60 FPS, but there were some dips below to 30. Now, Fortnite is very CPU dependent, but it does use a GPU a decent amount in performance mode, so it's not going to get the best results here, but it is technically playable in my opinion. So overall, the i5-12600K is great, and the system we built around is definitely overkill, but we wanted to showcase this awesome MSI component collection. Big thanks again to MSI for sponsoring this showcase of their awesome hardware that they have for any gaming PC build, let alone an iGPU build, if that's something you're wanting to do. But it does make for a very, very beautiful gaming PC overall, and you should definitely check the links down below to pick up all the latest parts that MSI has to offer. And uh, yeah, that's it for the benchmarking section of today's video. How to bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys, so we got some interesting test results for you. So the 12600K is a very, very, very strong CPU. Now, does that mean that the integrated graphics are awesome? Well, I would say they're pretty good for being Intel, but obviously on the flip side, if you got something like a 5600, 5700G, that does have slightly better integrated graphics for the APU side of things. But for games that are more CPU intensive, the 12600K actually kind of took the bread for that. And obviously once you add a graphics card, this will naturally be a little bit better than something like a 5600G. So so big thanks again to MSI for sponsoring this video and allowing us to test the iGPU, which we've always wanted to do. And they reached out and they were just like, yeah, showcase all our awesome white components for making a very high-end gaming PC. And yeah, you can easily slap in a GPU with this configuration if you like what you see here and build an awesome rig. So definitely check those links down below. And big thanks again to MSI for sponsoring this video. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. If you guys didn't know, aside from our other two YouTube channels and our Twitch, you know, in case you can't get enough of us, we also have our Toasty Bros Instagram, Toasty Bros Facebook, Toasty Bros Twitter. We even have a Toasty Bros TikTok that kind of pops off sometimes. We do some crazy things over on TikTok, so check out those links down below and follow every single platform if you can't get enough of the Toasty Bros. See you guys later. Goodbye.